We started this study in 2000 after the battle in Seattle. You may remember that uh, the NGOs stormed the uh, Seattle meeting of the WTO protesting globalization. And we wanted to understand who the NGOs were. And we found that, in fact, NGOs were the most trusted institution in the world. And that has remained such to this point. The, the second thing that uh, has evolved over this uh, period of 19 years is dispersion of authority. We found, in, beginning in 2006 and 2007, that a person like you, someone close to you, became a very credible uh, authority figure. Um, and it was really a vote of no confidence in CEOs and in government. Um, we then found that um, in 2008, the destruction of trust uh, in, frankly, business sector um, was, was an incredibly big blow. Um, that government rose to an unparalleled height um, and that, uh, in fact, government saved the world, which stopped in 2011 and 12. Impasse in Brussels over Greek debt, impasse in Washington over the budget, and then we saw a decline of trust in government because of scandals in developing markets. So with trust in places like South Africa is now 15% in their government, an all-time low. Um, we also saw that media, over a period of time, was like an airplane running out of gas. Going, 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 but slowly sliding. And that became a crisis point last year with the battle for truth. Only half the people, half the people said that they were engaged with media. So what does 2019 show? Some very, very important changes. So what's happened this year is that trust, which started out as a top-down kind of phenomenon, the sort of mosaic bequest to mankind <laughs> from the mount, um, actually moved to horizontal about 10 years ago. It moved to peer-to-peer. -to -peer. This year, there's an important change. Trust has become local. And it's partly a response to fake news, but it's also partly a response to something that I can control. I feel as if I can control my relationship with my employer. My employer has now soared to be the most trusted institution in the world. 80% in the US, 75% globally. This is a phenomenon that you must pay important attention to. Let us try to unpack the basic condition of the world as to trust. First thing to know is that the mass class divide is back with a vengeance. When Paul talks about the haves and have nots, appreciate that the underlying conditions are very similar to 2016, 2017. What's happened is the elite trust has soared this past year and mass trust continues to stagnate. And this mass class divide has now metastasized. It is no longer simply a phenomenon of the UK, France, the United States. It is now in markets such as India or that gentle country called Canada. 20 point trust gap in Canada. Trudeau has an issue when we think about elections coming this fall. We also find that there's a gender gap in trust. For the first time, it is evident that women are substantially less trusting than men in institutions. And it's particularly true about their attitudes to business. In the United States, for example, a 15-point gap between trust institutions among women than men. Why? Well, you can hypothesize pay, few women CEOs, and Me Too. Beyond that, there's a political aspect to trust. We find, for example, that in the United States, again, my best example, Democrats love media. 70% trust media. Republicans, 30%. Republicans love business, 67%. Democrats, under 50. So the divide is inherently uh, political. Divides also occur as to industry. Tech continues to be the most trusted industry. Financial services, the lowest. There's also an important national aspect to trust. The emerging markets, particularly China, Brazil, and Mexico, lag. The highest trusted countries are Canada, Germany, and Switzerland. But importantly, I want to explain the mass class divide. I want you to appreciate what's behind it. The fears of two years ago that caused the Trump election, et cetera, were primarily matters of fear about future, but as described by immigration. Today, the fear that matters the most is automation. 
Two-thirds of workers tell us that they are afraid of being replaced by machines. They see a dire future for themselves. They believe, only one in five believes the system is working. Only one in three sees that their family will be better off five years from now. So in fact, it's not an immigrant I fear, it's a robot. On top of that, you see a very clear picture of dismay about future. Particularly in developing markets, I want to point out that corruption spikes have also caused a diminution of trust in the elites. So what we have is a desperate search for control and taking back power to yourself. This is manifested by a stunning rise in engagement with media this year. For all of you who are in media or have been in media, you should feel very good because the engagement with media went from 50% to 72% in one year. An unparalleled rise in the 19 years we've been doing this. And the number of people who are not just reading but amplifying has doubled. We have 40% of people now who see a story and then share it. They are deeply involved in the process of news and also discussion. That is a very positive sign. However, people don't feel that that's enough. They are taking control back onto themselves. Example, the Gilets Jaunes, cited by Paul Pullman, but also the Women's March, the Women's Wall in India about treatment by men, but also within corporations. Pay attention to the 20,000 people who stood up and walked out at Google first of November. Also, people at Salesforce who said, I'm not working on a border patrol uh, program. It's a full employment economy. People believe that they have the ability to influence what happens at the corporation. That's why, transitioning, my employer becomes the most trusted institution in the world. Again, 75% globally, 80% in the US and other developed markets. What's the implications of this? Very important for CEOs to understand that 75% say, we expect CEOs to go out and act and not wait for government. Here's paralyzed government, here's the possibility of action through CEOs. And they also want CEOs to address issues related to being my employer, specifically pay, diversity, and retraining. Underline that word because they're afraid of machines, retraining. On top of that, there's a big expectation by employees that a company will not simply pay them, it will also empower them with information so that they are able to contribute to the discussion and on top of that, that the company will have a social aspiration, some big idea. So in fact, an employee in response to positive stimuli will do multiple things, will advocate for you, will be loyal to you and also engage broadly in the community. So, our basic hypothesis in trust this year is a profound change in landscape. It is trust at work. In, effect, in a certain way, if you use an economics phrase, it's microeconomics as opposed to macroeconomics. It is that trust is now put into the locality. It is something that I can see in the eyes of the CEO or the leader and understand and, and, and feel part of and feel confident in. So, we want to propose today a idea of trust at work, which is that smart companies such as PayPal, and congratulations to, to, to Dan and to Franz and team for your incredible donation last week to uh, American workers who were furloughed by government. Thank you for that. Four point plan. Point one, you've got to have a big idea for the company. You've got to have a mission. You've got to have a purpose, something that people can really feel strongly about. Second, you've got to inform them. You've got to inform your employees first, not last. You've got to make them your primary objective, not your customers, not your shareholders, not your communities. Your employees are your first order of business. And if they're informed, they will speak on your behalf. Third, Multinationals have got to focus in their home market first. You've got to make a commitment, whether you're in Palo Alto, whether you're in New York, or whether you're in Delhi. You've got to make your community work. And that means education, that means health, whatever else is required. 
And again, I salute Microsoft and Brad Smith, wherever you are, for your $500 million donation to affordable housing in Seattle. It's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. And last, you need CEOs to stand up and speak up and speak out. At a time when 75% of people say that they believe that business can make money and improve society, this is the new mandate for business. It is time for business leaders to step into the void. We have an absence of leadership. We have populists who are whipping up sentiment. We need to go back to the micro of the firm and persuade people by our actions that in fact trust can be restored. Thank you very much.